already that President Bush had corrupted even the U.S. Justice Department, that his political appointees appointed their own political appointees to fill even jobs that are not allowed to be political with political appointees. And we knew that the appointees of Mr. Bush's appointees broke the law in doing so by applying a political litmus test to job applicants in violation of the law those appointees were sworn to enforce. Tonight, though, in our fourth, uh, third story, we now have the smoking guns, plus a little racism thrown in for bad measure in a stunning report from the Justice Department itself. Its primary finding that the hiring in the Civil Rights Division was done legally, except when it was done by this man, Bradley Schwazman, who routinely overrode the traditional hiring process and in cases when he could discern political leanings, hired 63 Republicans or conservatives and two Democrats or liberals. As the report hit today, the chairman of the Senate Justice Committee to whom Schlossman denied under oath ever using a political litmus test, explained why Schlossman's crimes are so grave and why they transcend any power struggle with Congress. If somebody can break the law in our law enforcement agency, the Department of Justice, what does that say to the rest of Americans? His actions, in fact, undermine the very mission of the Department's Civil Rights Division, which is charged with enforcing federal law prohibiting discrimination. A strong and independent civil rights division has long been crucial to the enforcement of our precious civil rights laws. And experienced and committed career attorneys have always been the heart and soul of that division. In the past, the people who worked there, Mr. President, no matter how much time you spent with them, you wouldn't know that they were Republicans or Democrats. All you would know, these are among the brightest and best lawyers in the country dedicated to serving the United States of America and upholding our law. The result and, of course, the intent of this political makeover of the Civil Rights Division has been a dismal, a dismal civil rights enforcement record. When you have somebody who is part of the Justice Department lie under oath, and do it in a way to cover up, subverting the laws that protect all of us. And the civil rights laws protect all of us. It protects all of us. White, black, brown, no matter what our race, our creed, it protects all of us. And what has marked this country is the time I was a young lawyer in the 60s has been our adherence to the civil rights laws. You can't go back to a time where they're enforced for some and not for others. In a statement, Schlossman said the report could not be trusted in part because it was incomplete after he had refused to answer questions and because one of the attorneys conducting the review was hired by Schlossman himself. And of course, who could trust anyone hired by that Schlossman guy? The Bush Justice Department is, surprise, surprise, not prosecuting Mr. Schlossman for his violation of, yes, civil rights laws or for lying to Congress. But now at least we have Schlossman's own words. Quote, I can assure you that applicant is a good American. We made up a four-member vast right-wing conspiracy at my former law firm. Is this guy conservative? Answer, I don't know. I don't think so. I'm not sure. Schlossman, then he probably won't be hired. Just spoke with applicant to verify his political leanings, and it is clear he is a member of the team. I have an interview at one with some lefty who we'll never hire, but I'm extending a courtesy interview as a favor. Just between you and me, we hired another member of the team yesterday, and still another ideological comrade will be starting in one month, so we are making progress. How does applicant view the world, if you know what I mean? And for God's sake, don't forward this email. Oops. And when his boss forwarded a job candidate, Schlossman had only one question in an email of just one word. Conservative? And then there was the racism, to emphasize the racism at the top of the Bush Justice Department's Civil Rights Division. Speaking of a lawyer who had graduated magna cum laude from a top law school, receiving positive performance appraisals at justice four years straight, Schlossman called her, quote, an idiot who was an affirmative action thing and, quote, wrote in Ebonics, Civil Rights Division. Schlossman also forwarded an email from John Tanner, chief of the voting rights section, in which Mr. Tanner said he wanted his coffee Mary Frances Berry style, black and bitter. Mary Frances Berry was, at that time, in her 11th year, chairing the U.S. Commission on Civil Rights. Schlossman forwarded the email to the DOJ's principal deputy assistant attorney general saying, y'all will appreciate this, the Civil Rights Division. 
but not all of the division. The brunt of Schlossman's impact came in the voting rights section. Why voting rights? Because there he and his comrades could do things like uphold a Georgia law that discriminated against black voters and prosecute fewer violations of minority voting rights in favor of alleged voter fraud that helped justify purging voter rolls. Despite the allegations being so bogus, some U.S. attorneys lost their jobs for refusing to prosecute them. Here's Bradley Schlossman on the voting rights section of the Civil Rights Division. Quote, I too get to work with mold spores, but here in civil rights we call them voting section attorneys. My tentative plans are to gerrymander all of these crazy libs right out of the section. Perhaps the voting division will name an award for me or something. How about the Brad Schlossman Award for most effectively breaking the will of liberal partisan bureaucrats? I would be happy to come back for the awards ceremony. Accepting on Mr. Schlossman's behalf will be Barack Obama, Obama's Attorney General-designate, Eric Holder, former head of the Civil Rights Division.